Hi everyone, today's story is called The Runaway Dinner. It's quite a good book. This is another one of Mrs. Donnerstag's choices. She's very good at picking books. So, now here's an exciting here story for you. Full of such fun and exciting stuff, you will surely love it. And the best part is, it's all true. There once was a boy, Banjo. His name, yes, was Banjo Cannon. Cool name. Well, he was a little boy, this boy. He lived in a house, slept in a bed, wore all the usual sorts of clothes, socks and scarves and the like. He loved his cat, called Mildred, his mum and dad, who were called Mr and Mrs. And every day, summer or winter, rain or shine, he had sausage for his dinner. On his own little plate, with his own little knife and fork, salt cellar, ketchup pot, at his own little table, with his own little chair. Yes, a sausage, a sausage for his dinner. Now here's the exciting bit, the unbelievable bit, though it is true, remember? One summer's day, just as Banjo, with his knife in one hand, his fork in the other, was leaning towards and smiling happily as the thought of eating his dinner, the sausage, called Melvin, jumped, yeah, jumped right up off the plate and ran away. Well then, of course, as you might expect, the fork ran after the sausage, the knife ran after the fork, the plate ran after the knife, the little table and the little chair ran after the plate. This is all true, remember? And Banjo the hungry boy ran after them. Actually, if you want the whole truth, he ran after a few others as well. You see, Banjo did not just have a sausage on his plate. That would be silly, wouldn't it? Just a sausage, one little sausage, that's not really a dinner. No, Banjo also had three fat peas, four baby carrots and a handful of french fries. Yes, and the thing is, of course, they were all on the plate as well. And when Melvin ran off, they, as you might expect, ran after him. The peas, as it happened, were all called, were all boys, Peter, Percival and Paul. And the carrots, well, they were all girls. They were called Caroline, Clara, Camilla and Christabel. As for the fries, well, they weren't really, there was too many to name, really. And being French, of course, they had names like Francois, Fifi and so on. So that's it. The whole truth, the complete picture, you see. Here they are, the whole lot of them. Not forgetting Mildred the cat and Mr and Mrs and Bruce, the next door neighbour's dog. Don't forget him. He was chasing Mildred, actually, all racing down the road. Chaos. Well, the first thing that happened was the carrots, all four of them, escaped by hiding inside a paper bag. Bruce chased Mildred up a tree. And a pigeon ate poor Percival. Oh, sorry, Percival. Melvin, meanwhile, was running strongly on his two little legs. He came to a zebra crossing and waited for the green light. He crossed the road and then ran into the park. The next thing that happened was Mr and Mrs bought three ice creams. A couple of French fries escaped by sailing away in a toy boat. Au revoir, bon voyage, hula! Apologies if you have any French relatives. And a duck ate Paul the pea. Oh, bye Paul. Banjo, meanwhile, was running strongly on his two little legs. And the chair and the table were both running strongly on their four little legs. 
Actually, that's not entirely true. The little chair in particular was very unfit, quite out of puff. He had to stop and have a rest for a while. Only then, an old lady came along and sat on him. She was out of puff too. So then, of course, the little chair was stuck for quite some time. Melvin, meanwhile, was still racing away. With the knife and fork close behind him, and the little plate, and Mr and Mrs, and so on. Presently, a picnicking family spotted the fork, and the knife too. They grabbed them. At the same time, a boiled egg named Billy saw what was going on, and in all the confusion, he ran off himself. There's Billy. A couple of little girls who were skipping on the grass spotted the plate and grabbed her. She was a girl plate, Saskia was her name, and she started. they started using her as a frisbee, which, as it turned out, <laughs> the little plate really quite enjoyed being. Well now, there was a pond in the park, that's where the toy boat was sailing, and Melvin ran round it, and there was a cricket pitch, and Melvin round that as well. The rest of the french fries stopped here and sat down to watch the cricket. And actually, nobody noticed them. By this time, the sunny summer's day was coming to an end. And almost everybody was out of puff. Melvin, the sturdy little sausage, slowed to a stroll, to a dawdle, and finally stopped altogether. Whereupon, Banjo, the hungry little boy, came along. And, oh dear, can you predict what's going to happen? Ate him! Sad ending, isn't it? Well, not quite. Nearly. He would have done. He really would. Only just then, along came his hot and bothered poor old mum. No, no! She cried. Don't eat that mean... Don't eat that. It's been on the floor. The next thing that happened was Melvin seized his chance. He ran off and hid in the long grass, where, as it turned out, at that very moment, a cricket ball was also hiding. He was called Rupert. Meanwhile, the athletic little table, urged on by the salt cellar and ketchup pots, was still racing along. His style was very much admired by a number of park benches. On the other hand, Peter, the last of the peas, do you remember him? Well, he truly disappeared. It was a mystery. Mind you, he had to be somewhere, didn't he? It was a sunny somewhere summer's evening. Home went Banjo, carried high on the shoulders of his poor old mum and his poor old dad. Bruce, the next door's neighbour, dog went home too, and down the tree came Mildred, the cat. So there we are, that's the story. Full of such fun, don't you agree? And it was exciting stuff, wasn't it? Of course, poor little Banjo is still hungry, hungrier than ever in fact. Luckily, help is at hand. You see, every day, or evening, rain or shine, summer or winter, after his dinner, Banjo has plum pie for his pudding in his own little bowl, with his own little spoon, and his own little jug of custard. Yes, a plum pie, a plum pie, uh, named Joyce, on this particular occasion, for his pudding. So that's all right, isn't it? Oh, isn't it? It's gonna happen again. Well, that was a funny story, wasn't it? And the end. Melvin and his new best friend, the cricket ball, walk into the sunshine. Oh. So, in that story, it didn't happen a lot, but some of the food had what's called alliterative names. We've looked at something called alliteration before. So, if you remember, the peas all had names that begin with P. They were called Peter, Percival and Paul. And the carrots all had names beginning with C. 
Caroline, Clara, Camilla and Christabel. So what I'd like you to do today based on this book is have a go at recreating this picture from the story but with your favourite dinner. So what would be running first? What is the favourite thing? What would be chasing it afterwards? And see if you can give the things in the picture alliterative names. So in this story, the sausage is called Melvin. That doesn't begin with S, that begins with a B. But you could come up with another name if you choose sausage that starts with S. One for the fork, knife, plate, table, chairs, even the boy if you want to use yourself or a girl. Uh, the cat could have a name. So look at that picture closely. See if you can recreate it with whatever you choose to do. And then I want to see what you could come up with later or via email. Okay, have a great day and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye everyone.